this video is going to be about measurement. Measurement might be one of the more difficult pieces of statistics. The longer I study statistics, the more and more I realize that good measurements are a crucial aspect of the successful application of st statistics. Now, the interesting part is stats so infrequently talks about measurement that it's almost like it should be a separate topic, but somehow they're, they're interconnected. So I'm going to attempt in this video to explain why I see measurement as such a crucial aspect of uh, establishing good scientific principles, if you will, or, or making for a good set of conclusions from a statistical analysis. I'm trying to figure out what are the pieces that absolutely need to happen such that the conclusions you draw from your data set with your statistical analysis are meaningful. And hopefully our discussion about measurement will help us get meaningful conclusions out of a data set and a statistical analysis. So here's what I want to uh, say about measurements. Good measurements are not simple nor easy. I've heard distinctions created around those two words, uh, even if you think they're defined as roughly the same thing. Some people want to separate out those ideas. And what I'm trying to say is that good measurements are in no way uh, simple, like it often takes a lot of kind of this unspoken art that you might learn in somebody's lab as you go to school or some sort of mysterious voodoo. I don't know what it is. There's all sorts of like uh, tricks that people have and like ways to get good, accurate measurements from uh, whatever process it is, it is that they're measuring. But nor is it easy. Like it's really difficult to even just obtain the right gears and tools and knowledge. But even when you have the gears and tools and knowledge, it still is kind of this like art form on how to use these new pipettes well. Uh, I think a lot of people can learn how to use a pipette, but learning how to do it well is something really kind of tricky with a lot of unspoken sort of nuance too. So I'm going to say good measurements are not simple nor easy. Uh, and for some ideas, for some reasons I just highlighted there. Now, I think moreover, though, what we need to be able to take away as a statistician about any data set is for any given uh, hypothesis that you're interested in testing empirically, you need to be able to separate what you want to measure in order to test a hypothesis versus what you can measure. So I'm even going to write that down. Need separate what you want to measure. Like if you could obtain measurements with all the gear and all the tools and all the knowledge and all the artistry you could possibly obtain, what quantifiable values do you want to measure from the process of interest? Versus what can you measure? So this is like if you don't have the gear and you don't have the tools and you don't have the knowledge or you only have some tools and some gear and some knowledge and only some experience with working with whatever the process is, whether it's going out into the field or working in a lab, what can you actually measure from the uh, process of interest? And I think you need to be able to separate out what you want to measure from what you can measure, because what's missing in between there is often a lot of what connects your data to your hypothesis. So I'm going to try to spend uh, the majority of this presentation working in this context that good measurements are not easy because the data do not always connect directly to the hypothesis of interest based on this distinction between what you want to measure and what you can measure. I'm going to try to spend most of this video talking about three examples that, in my mind, work our way through this um, this separation between what you want to measure and what you can measure. So we're going to start with the penguins data set, because I think that data set is 
a good example of what you want to measure, you can measure. And so, and that's in fact why I've liked this data set uh, for the majority of this class is because want is basically equal to can measure. Okay, so the next example I'm going to give, I don't have a great data set for because that's exactly the point. We're working our way into this difference between we could obtain some data sets, but they're not directly what we want to measure. So I'm going to say it as high school to college success. That is in this world, we are often trying to measure what's going to make us successful in college. And oftentimes people think it's some measure of high school, but I'm gonna have more to say about this um, when we get to the actual example. So then the third example I'm gonna highlight is going to be um, IQ. The Western world thinks we have this great measure of intelligence and it comes down to this one simple test. But I'm gonna argue that these three example here, examples here are on a spectrum where the penguins data set has what you want to be able to measure and what you can measure nearly identical. High school to college success is like kind of this in-between state where what we want to measure, we can measure. We're just not totally sure if that's the right thing to measure. So I'm gonna say this is in between. And down here on IQ, this is all the way to the other end of the Penguin's data set where what we want to measure is unknown. So we can't possibly measure it. We don't know how to measure this thing because intelligence is not just a well-defined topic. So I'm going to go through these three examples one at a time. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on them, uh, really just trying to emphasize the points that I've already made about them. So let's jump into R for the penguins data set because what we want to measure and what we can measure are nearly identical. We have a data set that is really quite informative for us. So let's just load the library ggplot2. Let's read it in our penguins data set. And then I'm going to make just a simple scatter plot with the geometry of points. I'm going to put on the x axis bill depth and on the y axis flipper length. Then I'm going to color the points by island and give them different shapes by species. So it might take us a minute to stare at this plot. In fact, let's see if we can just make it huge. Here we go. So look, if we are trying to identify species based on some uh, like physical characteristics of the species, well, we can directly measure physical characteristics of these penguins. If we're just trying to separate species, whether it be geographically by island or by bill depth or flipper length, these all being some sort of physical characteristics, then we can directly measure those physical characteristics. And we have measurements form for each penguin. And notice that in this case, we really do pretty good. Like anytime a color of the points shows up with a common shape, then we seem to be well separating uh, the, I, the species of penguin. So indeed, it looks like all these squares are Bizco Island penguins are Gentoo. So all of these squares are Gentoo penguins on the Bizco Island. Now look, this pinkish salmon-like color doesn't perfectly separate Gentoos because here's a Bizco Island Adelie penguin. So it's not like the squares are perfectly separated by island, but at least the squares are pretty well separated by build depth and flipper height, kind of like right here, right? This is our line of separation. I didn't know I could do that. Okay, another example. Look, 
blue circles are similarly well separated by build depth and flipper length, but also by the island. So in this case, we can fairly well identify the species of penguins by the physical characteristics of these penguins, and it works out well for us because we can directly measure some of these important physical characteristics of the penguins. So not only do we want to measure physical characteristics of penguins, we can measure physical characteristics of penguins. So this is a perfect example where what we want to measure is exactly what we can measure. So for this one, it works out really well. Now, if we move on to our next example for like what measures are going to indicate to us when a student will be successful in college, what we often go for is like high school GPA or SAT or ACT scores. Now, those are in some sense indicators of when students will be successful in college. But what we're like finding out as in the world of education, now, of course, the companies behind the SAT and ACT will not admit this, but what we're finding out is that these test scores are not the best indicators of college success. So there's this rather separation between what we want to measure, something that tells us when a student will be successful in college, and what we can measure. What we can measure is like high school GPA or uh, senior GPA, because sometimes the last year in high school is more important than any of the previous years. And we can measure SAT and ACT scores, but those aren't necessarily the things we want to be measuring. Those just happen to be the things we can measure. Somehow what we want to measure might be something closer to um, like socioeconomic status or something like this, because that often is just what's telling us when students are going to be successful in school. Like if you, as a student in school, have to spend all of your time uh, working to try to afford school, then it's certainly going to be much more difficult for you to attend classes and do all the homework you need to. So there's something else there. High school GPA certainly has some indication of how you're going to do in college, but there's going to be something else we want to measure. We just don't really know what it is. And it's got something, you know, in my mind, it's got to be something close to like how much time can a student devote to their studies? And that's what's going to indicate success or partly that's what's going to indicate success uh, in college. So this um, high school to college success example is something in between. We have some reasonable but not good measures that we can measure, high school GPA, SAT, ACT, but they're not great indicators of success in college. So what we want to measure is something else, but that something else is a little bit harder to uh, identify. Okay, so this one is kind of that in-between state. And I'm going to push this idea even further to the separation between what we want to measure and what we can measure is, in my mind, very distinct in the world of intelligence. The Western world wants there to be this idea of we can represent human knowledge and human intelligence by a single number. The higher that number it is, uh, the smarter somebody is. The lower that number is, the less smart that individual is. But routinely, there is no good definition of what intelligence means. In the 50s, 60s, 70s, a bunch of people thought if you just created this one test, this one test will define intelligence. But then we realized that really that test is kind of just measuring some sort of cultural knowledge base that maybe Americans have but isn't shared across the world because it's really just measure, measuring American cultural knowledge. So what we want to measure is largely undefined in the world of intelligence. What we can measure is give these people a bunch of silly tests and ask them to fill it out and then claim that there are right answers to the test. But those are not nearly the same thing. What 
we can measure this silly test that people have created versus what we want to measure, which we can hardly even define. There's that separation there that is really struggles to make the world around us be able to claim that intelligence is a measurable thing. Because of that separation, people are really starting to cast doubt on intelligence being like this actual quantifiable measurable thing. So hopefully these three examples here are going to give you some context in which you can carry into your next class or into your future careers an important concept that I believe in about statistics. Look, we're trying to make hypotheses about some underlying process, whether that underlying process is the rate at which rocks cool or the separation of species to some physical characteristics or what proteins are going to be direct causes or linked directly to, I don't know, cancer. What you want to be able to measure in each of these cases is almost certainly not going to be what you can measure. But whatever it is in that separation there, in that difference between what you want and what you can measure, is going to be crucial for how strong your conclusions are. So I really encourage you to spend some time figuring out this piece right here. This is the piece I think you need to think about very hard whenever you get your first data set that you actually care about. 